What's going on, y'all? This is Mo, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Naked Pavo Pico. This is kind of where it all started for the O3 Micros. I think this is really the first one that came on the scene that kind of started this revolution. So I think it's only fitting that as a homage as we end this era of FPV, these O3 Micros, we take a look at where it all started. Now, I nakedified this one. This is something we have to do ourselves if we're interested in doing it. And surprisingly, I think we're really interested in doing this. You know, this kind of fits my flight style. I fly a lot of the Whoops, ultra lightweight platforms, and this gets down to shockingly low numbers. I'm not going to spoil it just yet, but with the naked O3 on top, this might be, at least for me, the the, the one that I'll be keeping. You know, I'm not going to have four or five different O3 Whoops ready to go. I don't think anyone really should, but when you're choosing one, this one might be it for me. No hashtag, no clickbait. Let's take a look at it. All right, so we're going to get to some flight footage here. That's a little bit of a behind-the-scenes shot, me syncing up my audio recording. Got the goggles 2 DVR for y'all here. No color grading, or the normal color profile on the O3. Uh, no stabilization and a UV filter on, on the front. And, you know, one thing I'm going to harp on with all of these micro O3 builds, especially those that really weren't designed to take the naked O3, is durability is always a little bit of a concern. Now, I did crash this thing a, a heap of times at the tree spot you saw at the beginning of this, uh, the intro. You know, at that point, I had been flying the Pico for a while like this, and I was comfortable, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to see how it does. I crashed into the ground and the trees. Not horrible crashes, but harder than you would want to crash a naked O3 quad, and it was absolutely fine. Not even the duct broke. So, you know, there's a... There's a trade-off in, in some ways, I'm assuming. You know, we're lowering our overall weight. You saw 60 grams dry. So, you know, that lower weight brings us less inertia, less force on our crashes. So maybe there's a trade-off there. Either way, just be careful when you decide to do this to your quads. You know, this was something that I wanted to do with the Pico because I wanted an ultra-lightweight O3 Micro. And I think the 80mm platform is, is a nice, 45mm uh, props that is, is a nice balance between indoor and outdoor performance compared to maybe like a 2-inch or a 75. I think a 75 is a bit too small for outdoor flying and a uh, 2-inch is a little bit too big for indoor flying. You know, if you got the skills, you can fly any of these things indoors, outdoors, whatsoever. But this was a nice balance for me. You know, that's... I know we've seen a lot of these O3 micros, but this might be one of my favorite flying O3 ducted micro quads. This and the Flylens 85 are, are kind of neck and neck for me. I like the lightweight of the Pico. You know, the Flylands 85 can't get close to sub-100 gram numbers, and the Pico can. And this performance, and I, I have to go back and fly the Flylands, this is close to how impressed I was 
with how the flight performance of the fly lens 85 was and and that was you know one of the better quads that i had flown for, for a while this gives it a run for its money and might even exceed it in a couple of use cases primarily the indoor flying and if sub 100 grams is important to you this thing crushes that but what can I say that hasn't already been said a million times about these O3 micros? They're a lot of fun, especially the ducted ones. They're a lot of fun to fly. Everyone should have one. It just really comes down to which one is right for you. This thing is pretty sweet without the full O3 in there. Probably have a little bit more battery life, but I'm gonna bring it in. Yeah, not too much more. I never like to push the O3. All right, so here at the desk, I know it's a bit messy. I know we're getting back into that messy desk era. Um, I've had a lot of projects this week, and I haven't really had time to clean it up, so just kind of ignore what's going on on the outside here. But we're just going to take a look at a couple of the key things that I want to go over if you decide to make the Pico naked. This is really going to only pertain to, you know, nakedifying the Pico, as that's how I flew it, and that's how I like to fly it, and that's how I, I want to recommend it. So this is going to be specifically going over those things those changes all right so when you buy a pico kit from beta fpv you're, it's going to be without the vtx so you have to install your own however you get your naked o3 whether you do it yourself like i did here or you buy the pre-naked ones from um, flywoo the installation will kind of be the same i mean it's essentially the same as the o3 but we lose a little bit of the dimensions so it's not going to fit snugly in there how i dealt with that problem is i printed out a 25 by 25 adapter. This is actually the same style of adapter. You can see it underneath there. That's what I'm trying to show you. It's the same style adapter that Beta included for mounting other VTXs like the Walksnail VTX and 20 by 20 mounted VTXs. I just printed one out to have that TPU. It just exists to put a little bit of space between the carbon fiber bottom plate and the O3, kind of braces it a bit. I'll include a, a link to the STL in the description if you're interested in that. So that kind of stiffened it up a bit and, and the the final thing was i zip tied it underneath this little standoff here the, this the coaxial standoff has has the most room and i zip tied it to the frame and that thing isn't really moving around like i can move it back and forth slightly or horizontally slightly but it while flying it's not moving around i think that's very important that's one of the biggest challenges when you nakedify your o3 on the pico and that's how i dealt with it Another thing that I did that I recommend y'all do if you decide to go this route, even with a standard O3, is see these mount screws right here for the camera? That's actually a, a rubber grommet, a, a rubber gummy like this. Not this tall one, but just a standard one, basically cut, cut in half and squished between the uh, camera mount and, and the screw there. This just helps reduce vibrations from reaching our camera. Not, I didn't have too many vibration issues with the Pico. It's mainly the wind that we have to look out for on these O3 micro quads, but this will help reduce any vibrations really from reaching the cam. So it's a pretty free um, and easy upgrade that I recommend you do, even if, even if you have any Pico uh, variation, any VTX, it's just a nice little free upgrade. One other thing that I did on my Pico was eliminate this battery tray that, that was here on standard. I'll show you what that looks like. This is the, the stock battery tray, and it, it's pretty secure, and it allows our quad to sit flat when we're ready to take off here, but it's very restrictive. I could only really fit 450s in that, and while Beta's new lava batteries are decent, I wanted a, a wider range of, of batteries. So what I did was snip it off basically right at the base, that battery tray. I threw a little bit of Umagod grip. Any uh, sticky battery pad will do. It just kind of runs across there. And then finally, I, I put a, a small battery strap. This one's from iFlate. I got off Amazon a, a while ago. And, you know, I can hold now 550s, even six. 600s even 700s probably oh it's a little bit too heavy for the squad but it gives you a little bit of a, a variation of which batteries you can use i found that to be a pretty necessary upgrade yeah but outside of those couple modifications we had to do to, to make this fit the naked o3 this is essentially a stock pico um i didn't adjust the tune in any way no other settings were adjusted i'm sure you can get a little bit more out of it if we adjusted the tune but it was flying good enough for me in all honesty we have the 45 millimeter gem fan hurricane props on here 
for a while that was really the only choice in prop and it, it's not a bad prop these black ones are pretty sweet i don't think you can get these outside of the pico kit at least i haven't seen them for sale but hq just released their own 45 millimeter ultralight prop you got it in tri-blade and also bi-blade so i might mess around with the bi-blades on this and see if i can get it flying flying right if not the tri-blades these aren't very durable props but they're the lightest on the market you know similar to these 31 millimeter ultralight props that i run on my 65s um, i don't fly 65 too often but this prop is pretty kick-ass um so i think think that i think they're an interesting choice always nice to mess around and try different things but yeah i do wholeheartedly recommend this pico built out like this you know you're always going to take a little bit of risk should we nakify anything but this really gave the Flylands 85, which up to this point was probably one of the best bind and fly micros. This gave it a run for its money. I think it's mainly because the weight is so low, 61 grams dry. The Flylands doesn't come anywhere close to that. So, you know, this is a really interesting option for those of you who want to fly maybe indoors and outdoors. This can do it both. You know, it, it's it's not i wouldn't ever call any of these o3 quads durable i wouldn't say you should really bash them freestyle them with caution but again it comes down to that risk reward and they're just a blast to fly you can fly them around people in parks and it's just a little little whoop quad so a blast to fly everyone should have one i stick by that and that about wraps it up for the naked Pavo Pico, beautiful looking quad. I probably should have went with the blue. I kind of liked the blue. Or the gray. I think I made the wrong decision with the clear. <laughs> but either way, this was a fun quad and it surprised me. It really did. You know, the Pavo, I think I kind of discredited the Pico as it was really the first iteration of these O3 ducted micros that we've seen. And I don't know why it didn't start here. You know, because this kind of best fits the type of flying I like to do, the type of quads I like to fly. And with the Naked O3 on top, I think it actually does deliver one of the best ducted O3 performing micros that you can buy amongst the 400 that exist on the market today. Just as a quick summary of what we went over in the desk portion, actually, you know, I think you should, if you're interested in building this, just hop on over to the desk portion. I go over the couple of things that I did to make this Naked O3 ready. So I know it's a little bit of a cop out, but just hop on over. It's not very long. Just hop on over to that and watch it. I go over everything in detail there. But the Pavo Pico Naked Edition, just as as a as a wrap up for these O3 micros, ducted micros, please. It's duct. I'm I'm I want more ductless O3 micros, but ducted micros, I'm about burnt out. But I want to wrap up because I have reviewed a good number of them at this point. So I just kind of want to throw this in the end here. You know, it all comes down to what one is right for you. You know, out of all the O3 micros, the ducted micros that I've reviewed, I can't really say that anything has been bad enough for me like not to recommend. Like it's a stinker or something. It just comes down to what we as pilots specifically prefer. Now, I, I like... That my opinion that I'm about to give is on the basis of I fly lighter quads. You know, 2S is, is ideal for me. I don't really like to mess with anything above it for, for the micros. And, you know, that's where this opinion is coming from. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is the objective truth, but, you know, this is my opinion. Starting off with the 75 millimeter line of these O3 micros, I think there only exists two, at least the mainstream ones that I'm aware of, which is the Acro B75 from Newbie Drone that I have not flown, and this Fly Lens 75 with the Naked O3. This is a beautiful quad. Look at the soft mounted camera, got the carbon fiber base plate, nice weight distribution. I wanted to love this thing, but I just don't because I, it, it doesn't do outdoors well enough for me. You know, 40 millimeter props with an O3 and this thing is close to 100 grams with a 450 battery. It's just not what I'm looking for. It's not really efficient outside. We lose a lot of flight performance, a lot of flight characteristics in it. But for indoor flying, um, this thing definitely excels, just not what I was looking for outdoors. You know, moving on to the two inch line, things like the Mob 8. This is not mine, this is the buddies that I'm repairing. Um, and the Flylands 85 specifically. This category starts to get into uh, more outdoor flying, in my opinion. You can absolutely fly them indoors, but they excel outdoors. The Flylands 85 especially is a beautiful entry into the 2-inch. And, and for all-around quads, if you're going to be flying primarily outside, the Flylands comes with the Naked O3. You can't go wrong with that choice. 
it's just a little bit big if you're going to be flying indoors especially if you're not completely comfortable um this is as big as i got this is the pavo 25 two and a half inch props 4s i mean look at this thing man this isn't a micro anymore this thing flew phenomenally it really did outdoors especially it had an insane amount of power it barely felt like a whoop but I don't have any use really for this. Like this isn't the type of flying that I do. I don't do real estate flight throughs. FPV is in my profession. You know, I have a full-time job. I just do this for fun and, and I, I like the micro. So, I mean, if you're looking to get f footage and, and, and throw a camera on top and outdoor chases, this is the type of thing you would be looking for, not necessarily a micro anymore. And you know, that kind of leads us back to the, the original, the Pavo Pico. You know, and I wouldn't really want to, I wasn't really interested in the Pico at, at the start because Naked O3s really didn't um, exist and you had that heavy O3 on there and it was just too much. But with the Naked O3, this becomes, a, this, this, the potential is unlocked. And I got to say that this probably is the, the one that I will keep built up. And you can confirm that. Okay, see that spot up there? This is going to be sitting up there until I, I guess I break it. This is the one I'm going to keep built up. I'm not going to keep up any of the other O3 whoops just because, I, you know, O3s are expensive. I can't be having five different whoops. And I'm sure y'all can't either. You want one that fits what your needs and what you want to do. For me, it's going to be the Pavo Pico. Sub 100 grams, indoors and outdoors, ultra lightweight, was durable enough. You know, it's, it's fitting. It's poetic that the one that I'm going to keep is the first one on the scene. And that's about everything I had to cover with the Pavo Pico alongside my impromptu O3 micro review session. I might make a dedicated video um, reviewing these O3 micros just for anyone who may be looking to purchase one, because I really think, you know, if you're in the market, you're only gonna really get one. Um, and that's kind of my whole goal as a reviewer, as I'm sure many reviewers are, is, is hopefully not to, to push sales on anyone. I'm not an advertiser. I just want to share with you, you know, as unbiased as I can, my opinion about a specific platform and, and let the viewer make a determination as to if it's the right quad for them. Because just as this is the right quad for me, the Pavo 25 or the Flylens 75 or, or, or anyone might be the right one for you. So please never, never take these videos as if I'm trying to sell you something. I know that's kind of a popular thing. At the moment i'm not you know I, i'm not trying to make any money off of y'all i just enjoy making videos sharing my opinions and hopefully that comes across but you can confirm what i said right look look, look. it's gonna be right there so in my future videos if you're sub to the channel if you see that disappear be like mo i thought you said you were gonna fly the the pico where did it go i'll probably be like it broke because it probably did but <laughs> you know you can confirm it at least it'll be right there Anyway, this has been Mo. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, a big shout out to you. More build videos to come in the future. I want to be doing custom build videos. Just got a couple more videos to get out of the way. I get behind really quickly. Um, thanks again for watching. It's been Mo. I'll catch you on the next one.